Uh, <laughs> I might have to walk a little bit away from him because he's uh, quite territorial, so uh, I don't want him lifting his leg on the merchandise. Uh, Hello and welcome, and thank you for all those that reached out last week regarding my spider bite. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to keep a straight face because I'm just trying to take a little video and this guy here uh, wants to go off every three and a half seconds like that. So we did have a resounding yes to if you want to see Boris in his full action and how he actually looks after the volcano, oh sorry, the uh, secret octo lair. Here he goes, I'm going to give it to him. So Boris, do you, do you meet us? So... <laughs> He normally uh, goes out the front for Halloween. I did let everyone down in regards to <laughs> the books last week. I did say I was going to take care of that. Uh, before we get into today's topic of the lava lamp that I sourced from the Salvos or the thrift store uh, for $5 and just sold for five fifty plus poach, which was a insane flip because it only took uh, a day or so to do it, all those different things. Don't know if I talked about my spider bite. If I already have, I'll edit this part out. But thank you for everyone to, who had reached out. It was a very minute one. It was caught in my broom where I was cleaning um, some spider webs around. My doctor, my friend's a doctor, so don't worry too much about it. I reached out to her, got the all clear, got told what to do in two regards to look after the spider bite. Um, so if you do get bitten by a spider, any venomous insect or snake or anything along the lines of that, don't talk to the GP, go talk to your doctor, go talk to the hospital. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite good in that regards. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna flip the camera around quite quickly before we get into today's What's Sold video, give you an idea of what the lava lamp looks like, give you a bit of an update as to what the garage situation is. All right, so a bit of an update on the garage. We've been sourcing some more board games. Uh, if you were on the Friday Night Live, I've actually created a couple of domains, uh, the Disgruntled Octopus or disgruntledoctopus.com and .au. Um, and also my board game selling website that's in the process have been created called disgruntledgames.com.shop and .com.au. So soon enough, these board games will be cross-listed to a website and also eBay. And I'll be giving you some updates as to how the website functions and how I build it and all those different things. Moving across to the Skylanders, if you watched last night, I've got to be very careful, Boris is <laughs> don't really too close. Um, so the Skylanders, we're missing the Swap Force. I'm currently streaming uh, Swap Force, playing it as I test all the Skylanders. Uh, onto my other gaming YouTube, Octo's 8-Bit Dreams, apologies. Saturday night, check it out. Subscribe if you already haven't. It's in the description, the, the website for that. So we're quite quickly getting onto some more board games. These are ones that came in and Boris is doing his thing. So <laughs> I'll move over here. Uh, so basically this is the volcano lamp in question. We're in the process of getting it uh, wrapped up and all these different things. So what I have done, uh, is basically, and I will go turn Boris up in a second. These are the th kind of things what you'd be looking for. It's a Carrara or Kumara lamp. It's basically got those three pronged level legs. Um, I'm just going to flick over here quite quickly and turn Boris off. But what they do is, <coughs> Boris, say good night, buddy. Say good night. <coughs> All right, there we go. So Boris has gone to sleep now. So. These lamps are very, very rare, um, only sold in Australia and quite collectible in the lava lamp community. If you didn't think there was one, there is. So going back to what I normally say in regards to doing research and all those different things, and I just wanted to probably flick it around because there's only so much of a lava lamp you can look at when it's covered in uh, cling wrap. So if you sell books in bundles or anything, get one of these, these are a roll. Uh, that's what I've actually you know, wrapped the lava lamp in to keep him together wherever he is down there. Um, so the lava lamp, Going back to what I've said numerous times to uh, resellers and to new resellers and all these different things is that you need to do research when you are looking at products. The reason why I picked up the lava lamp for $5 is because I've always wanted a lava lamp. I've <laughs> my sister had one, I've got problems. My parents didn't get me one, so I'm holding on to childhood drama in regards to that. Uh, the lady at Salvos hadn't priced it yet. I go to that one on a daily basis almost because it's right next to the post office where I duck out at lunch. Um, she told me I could have it for $5. Had all the intentions of keeping it on my desk, um, just to have as a bit of a background piece in regards to, like when I do the Friday Night Lives and all these different things, um, then did some research, you know, Googled the the, 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 the company name because I didn't recognize it. I just, honestly, I thought it was like a $10 lava lamp. Uh, then it came up quite, you know, a couple of Reddit posts, a couple of Facebook posts in regards to it, how, um, how sought after it was, had a bit of a, a cult following. I joined a Lava Lamp Facebook group, <laughs> support group, I, I suppose you could say. Uh, I put some photos in there and asked them some questions. And this is what I always go back to, have someone else do the research for you. So don't you know, go spend hours and hours and hours going down a rabbit hole when you find a community that is so 
intrinsically motivated. So they're doing it for, for the love of the product. So eBay sold listings uh, about a week ago when I looked. Uh, so basically one had sold for about $400. Nowhere near in the condition as this one. This one is phenomenal condition. condition. Uh, so basically I just put it up for $750. I uploaded a video of it working, some photos of it working. I saved it in drafts until that video actually became live on eBay. Put it up on eBay and within five minutes, I had someone from America reach out to me and ask me if I could sell it to them for $625 uh, with including postage. I said, I can't do including postage. So long story short, we settled at $550 Australian plus about $160 postage. Um, obviously they paid sales tax and they paid all these different things on top of that. So I think after fees and postage and all these different things, I walk away just shy of $500, I think it's $498. Reach out to other people in the community, especially if they're subject matter experts. They are phenomenal and they will help. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna flick back around to the what's sold part. I've dribbled on enough, my arm's aching from moving the camera around. I probably will get something that we can actually stabilize it for next week. Look at the desk and we're actually gonna go through to last week's uh, Flipwise data, we normally do it. Uh, generally what I would say is we're not going to actually focus on the highest selling uh, products because generally they're boring. We don't want to care about the boring stuff. We want to look at the interesting stuff. But eBay has been so brutal to me last week. I've only made 15 sales. So out of those 15 sales, I've taken a bit of an adjustment. I do have the lava lamp in there for the simple fact is that's probably the best flip that I've had in quite a long time. So I want to give you the data breakdown for that one. I've just created the shipping label. The shipping label is about just shy of $90. Uh, so we'll get quite quickly into the Flipwise data now. Um, I've listed 17 new items, sold 15 products for a net sales of $890. Uh, the next data I'm going to show you on the next screen is because they haven't caught up because we're still in that seven day cycle. So it's still getting the dregs from the previous Sunday. Uh, we've made just shy of uh, $1,800 in gross sales. The profit margin is nine. Realistically, it's $890 for that, for the period I'm looking at. So the gross average price per sale was $92.96 by virtue of the small amount of sales and the lava lamp skewing that data. The average sale price is $52.14. The profit margin is 56% and the average net profit margin is 45%. What we're looking at again is a high reliance on Facebook Marketplace. The reason why there's reliance on Facebook Marketplace is what I did allude to a little bit in the garage when we did that scene is that I'm actually creating a website which I sell primarily secondhand uh, board games that I'm sourcing from collectors. And these are very unique board games. They're not like Monopoly. They're not like Dominoes. They're the kind of RPG tabletop ones. I do have a couple of collectors that I have access to that are downsizing their board games, their products, and they're moving on to me for a decent price. I'm not saying it's dirt cheap thrift store pricing. However, these board games for the vast majority are pristine. Website will be coming out probably in the next month or so. I'm actually using Wix. I'm using a couple of other YouTube tutorials to actually how to build it. The website is called disgruntledgames.com or disgruntledgames.com.au. Um, at this stage, I think disgruntledgames.com is active. What my plan is eventually is to move all of those uh, websites like the .com.au .shop to redirect to .com. Uh, so even though they'll be shipping out of Australia, I'm um, going from that perspective. We will be looking at, you know, obviously doing uh, marketing and Google ads and all those different things. And we will do videos on those, but I don't have enough knowledge. I don't have enough data at, the site, at this point to say without reasonable doubt of how, uh, how much that's going to cost and how that's going to play into the grand scheme of things. So those board games will be listed on eBay at a higher expense uh, and quite similar to what I said with regards to Skylanders is that I'm going to drop um, little you know business cards or whatever it is from that perspective. I might even get little dice, Dungeons and Dragons-esque dice uh, printed, drop them in the, in the packaging when I sell them on eBay saying, hey, look, you could have got... 15, 20% cheaper from disgruntledgames.com. Same person, same service, go from that perspective and hopefully get an organic uh, traffic from that perspective and see how we go. But we're going to get into the data right now. So last week, just after I said on the video not to source Dixon, um, I had a Dixon shirt sale. <laughs> so I basically, I paid sixty-nine. Uh, sorry, $63.99 on this shirt, sold it for $135.98 with a net profit return of around $42, so $41.46. Uh, we're moving on to the next one. This is one of those things that slaps me. Um, so this is what I talked about a little bit on Friday night if you were in the live is that when you sell products that you do not have in the sense that I sell primarily Lego on my Lego shop, uh, my Lego eBay page, 
And by the looks of it, when I moved back and reactivated that Lego website, I didn't actually get all the listings that I thought I did. So this one sold, however, it had sold on the Lego um, eBay site many moons ago. This sold on the Disgruntled Octopus site. I actually go source this from another seller. Um, so I paid sixteen eighty five in addition to the ten dollars I would have paid originally for it. So I did get back an, an, a profit margin of minus two dollars. So, like I say, is that even people that have been selling, reselling for a very, 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 very long time still make mistakes. So I think we may have spoke about on Friday night as well. So this is actually for a Oculus um, Quest. So it's obviously VR headset, and this is the left controller. So a little bit of background story of this one. It was on Facebook Marketplace uh, for $20, rocked up to the man's house, went to his basement. Quite a weird uh, experience. Uh, don't recommend that, especially <laughs> after dark. Uh, could have turned south pretty quickly. But anyway, I got there. It was a lovely van. It was basically telling me that he listed it for $20. So the simple fact is, is that he thought if he listed it for free, people would muck him around, which was probably true, um, and not you know commit to come pick it up and not come pick it up. So he gave it to me for free. I listed it for $99.99 plus $10 shipping. It sold for $99.99 plus shipping, so $110 just shy of. After cost of shipping, after cost of uh, fees and all those different things, I walked away with $84.93. So, <laughs> so next we're moving on to my beloved lava lamp. Uh, so we're going to talk about that now. So this is the lava lamp. This is what I told you on the video preceding this one and also on the live on Friday night if you were into that. Basically, I took photos of it working. I took a video of it working. Videos on eBay I find traditionally take about 24 hours to populate or get approved per se. I did all the listing, uh, saved it to drafts until that video had actually, you know, got approved and was uploaded on the, on the listing. Uh, once it was done, that turned it live. Within the space of probably five to 10 minutes, I had someone reach out to me from the States, asked me if I would do 625 shipped. Um, I said I couldn't do 625 shipped. I paid $5 for it. I really could have. Uh, however, I was happy to do 550. He paid the postage on top of that. So he paid $677.60, and that's including the $550 plus $127 shipping, plus he paid sales tax on top of that as well. Um, I paid almost $90 in fees, so $86.39, international fee of $8. For the net return on this after fees and postage and all these different things is $488.47. So that's after the $5 cost of good as well. So next, uh, we're looking at a Game Boy game that's sold. I picked this up from Vinny's for $18. Uh, at a local one, it's kind of more of a boutique finish. Uh, they do have high-end video games and figures and all the things behind the behind the uh, the cupboard. This is quite uh, rare in Australia, so it's the European PAL version. It is legitimate. It was real. Uh, it was eighteen dollars, quite rare. This is at one hundred dollars. It did sit for a little bit. Um, it probably sat for probably a month or two. Uh, at that hundred dollar price point, I wasn't going to mark things down. I don't get into the point where people like, you know, over a period of time, they mark it down and kind of have a rolling markdown sale. I just run, you know, 15, 20% store wide sales, excluding a couple of items, probably on a two monthly basis. And that tends to clear out stuff like this. So I still walked away with $61 after that. So don't be afraid to pay up if it's going to get a good profit margin. So no, we're moving on to a Fear Street book. So these Fear Street books are. You know, the Goosebump books that I picked up from uh, the Salvos a couple of weeks ago, they cost a dollar each. So there's a bundle of 10. They're pretty acceptable condition. They cost me a dollar each. This double date uh, book at the top, which is the one that's been highlighted, still actually had its tattoos from the 90s in there. Um, they're really weird tattoos for some reason. Um, that was a selling point. Ended up selling it for $77.48 uh, posted. So basically they paid $67.49. I'm not too sure I must have sent an offer out. Uh, plus nine ninety nine postage as well. So that's going out. I'm glad. Uh, just probably around that two-month mark as well. So keep an eye out, like I said, that source books, if you know they're going to sell. Uh, the next one we're looking at is basically The Legend of Zelda. So I picked a whole bunch of, uh, and a whole bunch of, I mean, four uh, switch carts up for, for $80 from a, a gentleman uh, in the shopping center around the corner from where I live. Listed this one for $50 plus $10 post, so $49.99 plus post. You don't necessarily need to sell Switch games with their cases, right? So generally, I attribute the case probably that $5 to $10, depending on what the game is. This is the latest Zelda, which is quite sought after in the sense that it's got a, a cult following Zelda. Everyone knows Zelda. 
from the time I put it onto eBay, it took a week to sell. So we walked away with $21 profit after said and done for this one. And for the last one this week, we're looking at um, Lego's Dimensions. So this is basically very similar to Skyland. It's just Skylanders with Lego, right? Um, PlayStation 4 games in the sense of Skylanders probably... Well, definitely for Dimensions and also for Disney Infinity will naturally go higher than their Xbox One counterparts and definitely higher than PlayStation 3, Xbox, Wii, uh, Wii U and all those different things. So this one was actually sold on behalf of my mum. She actually picked up a whole gaming lot uh, because of all the horrible things that I make her go pick up for me. I did tell her that I'll list them and you know, any profits after fees and postage and all those different things uh, will go directly to her. So the cost of good was zero. Um, she paid... I think she got about 20 PlayStation 4 games and these were fantastic PlayStation 4 games for 50 bucks. Um, I literally rang her up and told her, get in the car and go for a 30 minute drive, pick them all up. All the games are fantastic. Um, and I think from memory, she's probably around that $500 in profit <laughs> just by virtue of this $50 buy-in. So from this game, she got $45.99, which was transferred across to her. If you do like this kind of content, please uh, consider liking, comment, and subscribing, all those different things. You know, you hear it all the time. I do appreciate it. Um, if I can give you some solid advice, please do some research. Do some preliminary research. Don't watch YouTubers. Don't watch TikTok people. All these different things telling you what to buy. If you are in a niche, you like board games, you like Skylanders, you like Plush, all these different things, there's a good chance you actually know what, what sells or yeah, what you're actually looking for so for grumpy granny it normally takes a few swipes for me in regards to my stance with books however just don't buy books for the sake of buying books don't watch youtubers that have like numerous 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 rooms of books um because you know and then try and copy their business model it's not going to work cherry pick your books anyway have a look i'm gonna go and i'll see you next week bye